All right, and we are live. Welcome to the Game Session Podcast. I'm your host, Jose slash Seth Okage. Um, this show is filmed live at 6.30 p.m. on Sundays. Uh, you can find my content over in the description down below, the little link tree down there. Um, you can find the podcast later on podcast services as well as on YouTube uh, as individually cut up segments and the full episodes. There's a Patreon. You can follow me on Twitter for what my Twitter's turned into fucking food opinion discourse the last week. And it's been a good time. I, I highly recommend it. 10 out of 10. Uh, <laughs> but this week I'm joined by uh, Corey and Blaine. How are the two of you doing? Doing dandy. I'm fine. What? Are- <laughs> What is what are your opinions on mayonnaise? Is it the god tier condiment? Um, I very little of it is a, well, a little goes a long way, and also my roommate absolutely hates uh, mayo. Well, really anything like white cream, <laughs> I guess. <laughs> um, white cream births life, Corey. How can you hate that? <laughs> I knew it was gonna go there. I was like, as soon as I fucking said it. Anyway, I was gonna say marshmallow fluff too, because like that shit's delicious. Mm. Yeah, I'm not even no, that so big of a shit. He likes man. so he yeah. likes like sweet, like marshmallow fluff is fine, but it's like it's like anything like mayonnaise or like sour cream or ranch, those kind mm. of things. He doesn't like ranch is hella good, just despite whatever John might say. <laughs> ranch has its place i don't i don't really eat it but it has its place all right um let's see ramen nomad says let me tell you one thing i think that people that they would never say is uh too many people are tweeting about days gone it man days gone is this is the most people have ever talked about days gone like not even the launch of days gone Damn was just fucking was lit <laughs> I mean, we'll get into it, but but the dude going off about it on the stream, like he's he's bringing a lot of attention to Days Gone, and it's not in a great way. I if like if I was a higher up at Sony, I'd be like, dude, can you please just shut your fucking mouth? Um, like someone please get a hammer and get his phone before he just ruins us. <laughs> so as someone who has not really paid attention to whatever the hell is going on, um, enlighten me. Well, you can you can enlighten yourself. There's these things called light bulbs. You turn them on so you can see things better in your room. I hate you. Okay, Amelia Bedelia, you know what he meant. <laughs> <laughs> Puns are good, but that was a little far. I know. That was a stretch. I know. I, I apologize to some degree, to a degree some might refer to as minor. You stretched, but, uh, you stretched but, further than you needed to to plug in that light bulb. Yeah, it, it, it was... <laughs> I apologize to a minor degree, but let's leave my profession uh, gathering coal and other earthly resources to another time. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, I, but yeah, we're going to jump into Days Gone. That's probably going to be the third story we get to. Um, for now, the big topic of the day is the, I guess, just everything involving Resident Evil uh, 8 slash Village. Woo. So there was a uh, I'll, I'll just read this right here. Uh, Capcom held another Resident Evil showcase this Thursday, complete with a new look at the Resident Evil Village, the unveiling of a mercenaries mode, a demo announcement, which uh, I believe me and Corey played. I don't believe you played it, Blaine. Well, the demo. Yeah, I played it. Oh, OK, you did play. It. OK, um, along with that, there's Resident Evil 4 VR, a Dead by Daylight collaboration and the animated movie Infinite Darkness. Um so what do we what do we want to talk about first? Uh, there's a lot to <laughs> kind of digest. Do we want to go over the new stuff shown in Resident Evil Eight? Do we want to talk about the demo? Uh, yeah, question. we can we can talk about the new trailer first since that's like the first thing that was shown. Okay, so I'll just go ahead and list off some stuff in whatever way we want to split off into naturally. That's that's cool by me. Um, so yeah, the new trailer shit off a little bit more of the game, kind of like hints and gleams at the story, such as stuff like, um, everyone in the village seems to be worshiping someone called Mother Miranda. I don't believe that's, um, our dearly beloved, uh, tall lady. It's going to be some other kind of figure, but yeah, even no. the, um, the quote unquote, like good villagers, they, they still worship her in like some kind of like cult like fashion. Um, I, I don't know if this, this, this might be demo stuff but uh the the plot framing of this is that ethan is looking for 
uh, Rose, who is his daughter. I, I guess that's like a good little um, plot thing to like kind of drive you forward, I guess. Yeah, because like in well, like in the first one, he was going to try and try to find Mia. So it's always like he's chasing after someone he greatly cares about. I, I will well, say I will ca- I by default, I'm going to care infinitely more about Rose and Mia because I'm going to assume like when you when you get to Rose in the game, I'm going to give that baby the benefit of the doubt it's not going to bust out a chainsaw and cut off your fucking arm i i was <laughs> i was real yeah. fed up with me a real freaking early on in Resident Evil. <laughs> so i'm just like one ethan you should have not come to this texas chainsaw looking place you should have just dipped just go <laughs> me and my but he, um but if he didn't do that he wouldn't get to have the motel hell style chainsaw fight in the basement that, but like that, also, that's true also did wasn't she missing for three years yeah, she was already missing for like an extended and period he, of time at and that she, point. Like at that point, hadn't given up and moved on. Is that the time frame? Really? Yeah, yeah it's something like that. Yeah, I thought it was like it's, six it's a decent amount of a year. No, nah, it's it's longer than that. I mean, don't d- like far far be it for me to be any uh, to judge anyone on how long it takes to grieve, but that seems. I don't hey, know. Three years. <laughs> hey, all, all I know is me and my girlfriend. It's, it's not even an unspoken rule. We we've we have talked about this explicitly. Like, hey, if we get into a horror type scenario, like basically for the setup of Resident Evil Seven, don't bother. Just dip. Save yourself, my dude. <laughs> <laughs> Goes both ways on. <laughs> Honor me by living on. <laughs> exactly. Jeez. Oh my god. Um. Uh, what, one thing I, I gleaned from the demo and the not I'm sorry not the demo the uh, trailer, um, which I guess obviously from the demo you gotta see it for yourself. Uh, it looks like encounters are going to be a lot more action based with uh, multiple like faster enemies at once versus seven, which is kind of like the mold and they're all pretty slow aside from the liquor ones that are crawling around. Yeah. Um, one weird discrepancy I kind of saw and this is this is probably just generally like a trailer thing. When they were showing off the mercenaries mode, I saw that they were mostly going for like body shots for like from the hip uh, versus like aiming down, trying to go for the head. And they it looked like they were doing decent amount of damage just because they had like health bars above them, which is mm-hmm. only for the mercenaries mode. It's not for the campaign. So it made me think like, oh, this maybe you don't have to be as accurate, but uh, f- spoiler warning for the demo, uh, you still have to aim for the head. <laughs> Otherwise, you're going to run out yeah, of ammo. Yeah, uh, I learned that the hard way after getting just chewed on yeah. constantly. <laughs> My guess with that is that's like, I mean, I almost I put on my Resident Evil Village is just Resident Evil 4 2 conspiracy cap. But <laughs> it, it seems like they're doing a thing like Resident Evil 4, which was like the mercenaries mode is upgraded versions of weapons that those characters have and like. Like, I remember playing with, like, if you played as Hunk with his upgraded TMP, you could, you pretty much did body shots all day, and you would do headshots if you wanted to string, like, the neckbreaker combo and stuff like that. So mm-hmm. my guess is that's what they're doing, because we already know that weapon upgrading is going to be a thing in the mercenaries mode, mm-hmm. from, based on what they said in the trailer. And, and even the... Getting stronger weapons is going to be a thing, too. Mm-hmm. And even the, the base game, it's definitely taking cues from Resident Evil 4 with that. Mm-hmm. Um, one interesting thing I... I don't think I saw too many people picking up on uh, all the enemies in the game are very specifically referring to Ethan by his full name, like Ethan winners. Yeah. So it's not like he's just like some random uh, dude just hanging out in this village. Like they are very conscious of who he is. So even maybe though he going... is just some random dude. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, I'm sorry to cut you off, Jose, but like this That's is what's good. been driving me crazy since I played the demo is that y'all know and people who've watched the podcast and we talk about it know that I, every time I let go of my my theory of like, what if this is some kind of bait and like, this is actually the Resident Evil 4 remake. Because I legitimately believed that for like a hot second. And then like that first big trailer came out and I was like, okay, no, 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 no. I was, I was just make jumping to conclusions. But then like shit would happen like, oh, here's this really contrived story thing that doesn't seem like it's actually something they would write and bank on in a game this big. Like, when I'm playing the demo and a lot of... Uh, without, like, getting into, like, actual story elements, like, a lot of very contri- contrived 
uh, predictable horror things happen. And not to say that Resident Evil has always been the bastion of fucking subversive and well thought out writing. Lord knows it isn't. But like, there's just a lot of low hanging fruit. It goes right for um, like specifically with when you meet all the people in Louise's house. Um, mm-hmm. And I'm just standing there. I'm going through this sequence in the demo, and I'm just thinking like, it can't be this basic, right? I'm overthinking this, right? And then my brain just goes. But if it's a bait and switch, and none of this is either, either none of this is real, <laughs> or if this is all just like he's gonna die two cutscenes later, and then Leon walks in the door, it's like mm-hmm. okay, then it'll make sense. But uh, my own craziness aside, I pr- I'm pretty sure that it, they're probably. I think that there's more to be seen with this game, not necessarily in my crazy conspiracy theory brain that I just can't let go, but in just in things of like, I mean, we've seen cutscenes where like Ethan's being dragged through a cave. Uh, by the one dude um and we've seen like little environmental shots of like what looks like an, an in a cave like mine or like a factory or something which again more resident evil 4 vibes mm-hmm. um i i'm wondering if i know there's been theories of like is this just game going to go straight supernatural and they're going to give you barely any connection to like science shit at, if at all i'm wondering if the, if maybe that's why there's so, there there's so many things that don't seem like that like what if the bait and switch is not oh it's a not the game that i think it is what if the bait and switch is they do want to do like more supernatural straight supernatural and they're worried that if they come out and do that in the demos in the trailers that people are just going to shoot it the fuck down before they even play it my my guess for that is it's they're not going to go like an necessarily like you know the super nitty-gritty detail like how the virus specifically mutates them to like coincidentally yeah. look like fairy tale fucking monsters or whatever but i think at some level uh we might be giving and not, not this is the royal we it's just general yeah. fan base yeah. um res like as you kind of like noted on before resident evil isn't like some bastion of storytelling or subversion it's 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 schlocky b b horror movie Mm-hmm. And it is perfect for doing that. Uh, but but, um, build, but building off the similarities, you said like kind of like the settings that kind of echo Resident Evil Four. Does that mean we're going to get a laser hallway sequence in first person? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe not a laser hallway <laughs> sequence. Maybe a minecart sequence where he has to like dodge fucking TNT being thrown at him or something. <laughs> Are you gonna I'm say serious. Corey? I was going to oh, yeah, say. Corey, you go on. No worries. Uh, I was going to say as far as the. Um, Ah, what was it? It was uh, as far as the how, how uh, like what it's actually going to be or whatever. I, I believe somebody actually at the company w- said or at Capcom said uh, that um, it, the story of Resident Evil Village will fall into the universe of Resident Evil and every like it, basically the the overall arching lore of Resident Evil. It'll make sense within that universe. So I think that was like their nod of being like, hey like don't worry it's not actually supernatural it's actually virus related kind of thing see, see now nah, i want him to just be like no nah. okay <laughs> ethan's got to fight ghosts <laughs> I <had> ghosts. <laughs> he becomes a ghostbuster that. i don't know why i said that with like a fucking chicago <laughs> accent but um <laughs> no no because like i mean i i've said this and this is the thing that i i legitimately believe i hold on to because i think it is where this came from this game really feels to me like it was the team going, hey, remember that Hookman RE4 demo that just never went anywhere because we completely changed concepts, essentially? What if we revisited that? But now that we've established we can do more spooky, scary, like, ghost story kind of stuff, while still tying it back in with, like, the virus and stuff. Like, maybe we can take that even further and specifically go back. Because that's what this whole thing, even playing the demo, it makes me think of, like, are we going to start seeing ghosts? Not literally ghosts, but also if it was literally ghosts, I'd be fine with that too. Fuck it. I mean, Res- Resident Evil 7 was playing like super fast and loose with like the logic of how you're able to see like Evelyn's uh, projections or whatever. Just yeah. Like- it was like, all is, psychological. Is- yeah. Yeah, it was all psychological, but then you're also like, she had a physical body that would follow you around the house. So mm-hmm. it's like, it, it, it's you. Ha- sorry, spoilers on that like five year old game. Um, but <laughs> you ha- you'd have to like ask yourself like, but wait, is it that she is where that little girl is and she can kind of move herself around even though she's old? Is it one hundred percent a projection and it's just coincidence that like she managed to catch up to you? Like she wasn't actually able to move fast. Mm-hmm. Like 
those are those unanswered things that kind of leave you going, eh. But I will say, to Resident Evil 7's credit, that is one of the most masterful, like, environmental storytelling things I've ever seen in a game, is where you can find the photo of Evelyn in the very beginning, and it has the number on the back. Yep. But mm-hmm. because you have no context yet, you would never think that that's what that is, and by the time you learn about that number, you can't mm-hmm. even look at that photo anymore. Yeah. So it's... You know what's funny? On, like, every repeat playthrough, every time you run into, uh, uh, Granny Evelyn, I just pull out my knife, I'm like, I'm, I'm, let me stab you, let me just get this over with right here, right now, but the game just won't let you do it, yeah. because, like, friendly fire parameters or whatever game exists. Oh, yeah, it's, that, but also, oh, sorry, Corey, you go on. It's definitely gonna be, um, it, it, it's definitely gonna be along what, kind of what Blaine said, um, was... Uh, with Resident Evil 7, we really spent a long time, like, it feeling that this, that, that, yeah, we know this is Resident Evil game, but it feels way too supernatural or, you know, just freaky. It's just absolutely freaky for a Resident Evil game because usually it's like, oh, it's a zombie infection or it's a parasite or something. And it's, it's pretty obvious that something biological is happening. But with Resident Evil 7, they made it, very secretive until the game came out that mm. it's like this game is borderline supernatural. They really started it with the whole like Blair Witch Project style uh camera crew, you know. Well, they they like oh, super yeah, leaned yeah. into the uh they leaned into like the Texas chainsaw elements just like what's going on with this family? Like yeah. I don't even actually yeah. you know what they they didn't hide the mold. There was one in the demo that you could find. It was like it was some demo. There was like a follow up, not the initial one. Mm-hmm. Um, but they totally hit everything about Evelyn in there too. Yeah. And this is, it's really interesting because it's like the, what we've seen so far of Resident Evil Village, it it really makes it feel, um, kind of Castlevania-y, you know, Mm -hmm. or like, or like Helsing kind of. And I like that. I think a lot of people really wanted like, you know, the old monsters, like lichens and vampires and stuff in there. Um, because it's just like there is something uh, horrifyingly mis- mystical about those creatures, and so yeah. it's I I do believe there is a biological reason and there is a virus involved, but I don't think we're going to even suspect it or even know what it is until the very end. Just like in seven, you know, we're not even going to realize what's going on until the very end. I mean, I, even Ethan is just like I, one of my favorite parts of the demo is when he jumps out a window. And he's just like, God damn it. He basically says his own version of the Die Hard 2 line. Like, how could the same <laughs> shit happen to the same guy twice? <laughs> right? <laughs> uh, um, I, I guess going back to the point from before, it's, yeah. uh, j- j- it's just like speculation. I don't know uh, for this stuff. But yeah, they're, they're like super specifically addressing Ethan uh, by by his full name. And the fact they took his daughter, I'm going yeah. to assume it's not even maybe necessarily about him because they don't they seem to that care about super him super cut in the trailer of all the different villains saying ethan ethan yeah. winters ethan winters ethan winters, ethan winters. <laughs> <laughs> again it's like how every time someone would say leon kennedy in resident evil mm-hmm. 4 but it means mm-hmm. nothing because ethan is a nobody to us anyway he's a nobody yeah like do y'all, do y'all this is my question to you guys do y'all think that they could through this game build him up to be like on the level of like leon or chris or jill or to be fair just like within the context of uh what what he personally accomplished in resident evil 7 that that's damn near comparable to what everyone else has gone through no it is also i i have a very strong feeling that at you know if you've played the not a hero dlc for resident Mm. evil uh biohazard um i have a feeling that that everybody yeah right everybody basically all the baddies in village are connected to um lucas somehow because i they're part of the collective because how else would they have known about ethan winters you know i'm sure he i'm sure lucas reported on everything and all of his findings and everything he was dealing with with ethan winters oh don't worry every uh, once i take care of ethan he won't be a problem anymore, and he's like sending them files. I I just have a strong feeling that it's gonna yeah because we know because we know that there was some kind of because what the people that were work that were hired Lucas were very clearly trying to start up some 
B.O.W. shit again. Mm-hmm. Um, the assumption is that it, because because the whole thing was what it was. Blue Umbrella was the made up of the people that left Umbrella and wanted to make good on what happened. So right, allegedly, we still don't even know if that's true or not. Mm-hmm. Um, we know Chris was working with them after uh, whatever it was called fell apart, and then the I BSA, the BSA, like just fell apart or whatever. Um, and now Chris is supposedly allegedly evil. So can, can we yeah, talk I mean, about that very specifically? I think people seem to, I think people have either not played seven or they seem to forget Mia does not die from five head from, from five bullets. She yeah, fight her thing. multiple times. It takes a lot to just like temporarily stun her. She like, if, if that's Mia, like legit Mia, she's fine. She's good. Well, that, that's like well, a slap but, on the wrist. But she also got the vaccine and it's yeah. like, and that's like the canon one of that is that she got the vaccine so that she was is no it, longer under. Was that just to get rid of uh, whatever traces of Evelyn's controllers that's still in her? I guess we don't really know. Because even oh. um, mm-hmm. I, if you want to bring up Resident Evil 6, but Sherry, uh, she had the vaccine for the G virus, but she still has it in her. Like she still has like their generative abilities and whatnot. Real, okay, that I didn't. Oh, was that in 6? Yes. They established that? Okay. Yeah. Um, so then I guess it's open to debate. I know that, I know that we already. It is already a stretch that what's her name with no medical background shoves a, a hand and a head into sorry a hand and like a fetus into a food processor and that oh no like no sorry like a coffee grinder and that somehow makes a vaccine. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, wait. Yeah, yeah, no, that did. And then what did Ethan do later? He took the other thing that w- which would kill uh, Evelyn, and he had the, his own little special box for that. Mm-hmm. But I don't know. I don't but know. Um, it, I, I'm, I'm just going to call it. Okay, I, actually, you know what? Th- this is what I have been on record for saying before, and I'm still going to stand. I'm basically just going to echo what I said before. Mm-hmm. I don't believe this game is going to be some subversive thing where they suddenly turn Chris into some kind of villain. Like this is literally, I'm, I'm going to call it. This is literally the plot of the fate of the furious. Vin Diesel was, was pretending to be a bad guy. That's all I'm saying. Oh I- yeah, of course it is. I- I'm going to be real. I think anybody who actually thinks Chris is, has gone bad is lying to themselves, but like as far as how heavy, heavily their shit hit, like their their uh, uh, how thick they're laying it on. Mm-hmm. Considering how thick they're laying it on, it it's really doesn't marketing. seem like he's actually. Evil. And I, I'm not going to be specific about this. I looked up one very specific detail because I just wanted to get it out of the way to know if it was true or not. I'm not going to say if it was, but glad I looked it up. That very specific thing. Um, I think that's about it for the trailer, though. Do you, do you guys want to move on to the demo, I guess? Wait, what was the thing you looked up, though? You said you weren't going to tell us the answer, but you didn't tell us the question. Do you do you want to know? Like, what? Corey, at least what the question know? was? I, I kind of do now. <laughs> oh, you know what? I did talk to Corey about it. I forgot. I want to know the question. I don't want to know the answer. I can't control my face. That's the issue. <laughs> I'm not gonna. Well, I'm not gonna. I, I'm not gonna ask you anything. I'm just. Just no, tell no, me what you look. No, up. no, 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 no. Be- because I, I, I know this. Like, um, Here, I'll close my I, eyes. I, I, I have very mild-ish Tourette's. I can't control my face. Like whether I'm bullshitting or if I'm telling the truth. It's all good. But I looked up if Werewolf Chris is a thing. Okay. I know the okay. answer. Okay. Okay. That so that's, that's all I'll we say. Need, that's all we need to know. <laughs> can I uncover my eyes now? Yes, yes. you can uncover your eyes. 